Pockets are usually on the left side of shirts because most people are right-handed. Is this a myth or a fact? This is actually true. Many products favor the righties. Left-handed people will relate to this on so many levels. Let's say public transport. Have you ever noticed that the scanner at stations is typically on the right side? Household equipment and devices are one more example. Scissors, tweezers, bottle openers, and many other kitchen and household appliances are designed with right-handed people in mind. The same goes for shirt pockets. While some people use both hands equally and others change their hand preference between tasks, overall, most people are right-handed. A study has revealed that 75% to 90% of the world's population are right-handed and 10% are left-handed. This means it's more convenient for most people to have pockets on the left side than on the right side of their garments. Try it out for yourself. Your elbow kind of folds when you try to reach into the pocket on the right side. Whereas on the left side, your elbow makes an arc shape, which makes it easier to put things inside the pocket and take them out. Eating more protein leads to having bigger muscles. What do you think about this, bodybuilders? Myth or fact? This is a myth. It's true that eating protein is essential for building bigger muscles. I mean, proteins are building blocks of your body. And yet, eating more than you need is unnecessary. Everyone should drink 8 glasses of water a day. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth, so don't blame yourself for drinking less water than recommended. 8 glasses are not a magic number. Hydration needs differ from one person to another. How much water you should drink every day depends on your activity and exercise level. The temperature of the place where you live affects this number too. If you live in a hot area, you sweat more and need to drink more water. Soup, coffee, tea, fruits, and other things you eat daily also contain water. Carrots are high in sugar, so you should avoid eating them. If this is true, we should warn bunnies. Any guesses? Fact or myth? It's a myth. Carrots are about 85% water. One pound of cooked carrots only contains three teaspoons of sugar. Compared to the amount of sugar in desserts, this is nothing. Plus, carrots are high in phytochemicals, and eating them can help lower blood sugar. Medieval people believed in flat earth. Is this a myth or a fact? Obviously, flat earth is a myth. But so is the history built around this myth. You can't say that at those times. The whole world was skeptical about Earth's spherical shape. Even everyday visible things prove that. For example, medieval people could see that the twilight glow during sunrise and sunset formed an arc over the horizon. Vikings wore horned helmets. Is this a myth or fact? The well-known image of a Viking warrior is almost always completed with a horned helmet. But in reality, there were no horns. There's no evidence that Viking helmets were horned. Detox juices cleanse your body. Is this a fact or a myth? It's a myth. Detoxification doesn't work that way. Your internal organs are responsible for the process of cleansing the spleen, liver, kidneys, especially the liver. Your body is always in a natural state of cleansing itself. A person doesn't need to drink juices for detoxification. Nuts are junk food. Any thoughts? Myth or fact? You're right, this is a myth. Nuts are full of healthy fats. They're good for your heart and other organs. The average American throws away about 82 pounds of textile waste per year. Is this a fact or myth? Fact! Imagine all that waste. When someone throws their clothes away, they don't disappear into thin air. These items most likely reach landfills as their final destination. Donating clothes and selling them in second-hand stores are a much better option. Now, you've probably heard about life-saving laundry tricks that are said to make your clothes super clean and as good as they were on day one. What if those laundry tips are actually myths? I got three of them lined up for you. Shirts should be buttoned when you put them in the laundry. Is it true or not? This is a myth. You'd better keep zippers closed to keep their teeth from catching the fabric of other clothes. But fastening the buttons of a shirt can expand the button net and the button hole. In the long term, buttons will start slipping out of place. Washing clothes in hot water is the most effective way to clean them. 
Is this a myth or a fact? That's another laundry myth. You want to rid your clothes of germs, yet hot water alone won't be enough for this. Nowadays, many detergents can clean clothes in cold or warm water. You should remove stains from the face of the fabric. Is it true? Most people apply water and soap to the stain, starting from the front side of the fabric. But that's not the best option. A much better way is to start from the back. The stain can go deeper if you treat it from the front. Try to make the stain move up to the surface rather than push it inside. Listening to music is an effective tool for learning languages. Is it a myth or fact? It's a fact. Scientists say listening to a song and humming along can help you learn a language. Most people struggle to learn grammar, yet in our daily lives, we don't always follow grammar rules. Songs can help you pick up informal expressions. Scientists have also concluded that music can help you remember new words and add them to your vocabulary. Let me give you an example. It's from your first year at school. Yep, the alphabet song. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Either way, you might want to know these facts and myths about sleep. The longest someone went without sleep was 11 days. Do you think this is possible, or is it an urban legend? This is a fact. Randy Gardner set the record for the longest amount of time a person went without sleep. It was an experiment carried out by Stanford sleep researcher Dr. William C. Demond. The doctor recorded and monitored Randy Gardner's sleep activity. Gardner managed to stay awake for 11 days and 25 minutes. Your body eventually gets used to getting less sleep. Myth or fact? It's a myth. There are many studies proving that your body and especially your brain can't get used to sleeping less. Have you noticed that after a few nights of insufficient sleep, you begin to feel groggier during the day? That's your body trying to adjust to not getting enough rest. Long-term sleep deprivation affects your daytime performance, focus, and decision making. Many grown-ups need five or fewer hours of sleep. Can it be true? Well, this one's easy. It's a myth. Experts from the National Sleep Foundation recommend that the average adult sleeps seven to nine hours per night. Some people have a genetic mutation thanks to which they wake up refreshed after a short night's sleep. But such people are an exception. One in four million. The ability to fall asleep in any place and at any time means you're a good sleeper. What do you think, myth or fact? It's a myth. A good sleeper gets a proper amount of sleep and has a regular sleep schedule. Cats spend two thirds of their life asleep. Do you believe that? This will probably come as no surprise. It's a fact. How many of the facts and myths did you guess correctly? Next time you follow a recipe where you need to separate egg yolks from whites, try this. Peel a clove of garlic and rub your fingers with it. Carefully break an egg into a bowl. With your garlicky fingers, pick up the yolk, and voila! You can now marvel at how perfectly it separates from the egg white. If it's egg peeling time, there are two easy ways to do it. When cooking eggs, add a teaspoon of baking soda to the boiling water. This will make peeling eggs much easier. You can also place them under cold running water as soon as they're ready. The eggshells will come off much easier, and you won't burn your hands while peeling the eggs. The sides of roads have sleeper lines for a very important reason. Their main function is to alert those drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When a car starts steering off the road, the tires go over the lines, and the sound wakes the driver up. Those price tags and labels that come glued to your Tupperware are easier to remove than you might think. No need to waste hot water and soap trying to remove them. Take a hair dryer instead. Blow some hot air directly onto the tag for a minute or so. There you go. The label comes off at once. White household appliances might get yellow with time. To make them white again, use this simple trick. Apply bleaching cream to the surface of an item. Wrap it in plastic and let it stay this way overnight. The next morning, check it out. It'll be as white as when you first bought it. When you buy a pack of cans, opening it might turn into a problem. You probably tear a hole in the plastic and try to squeeze a can out of there. But the bottom of cans was actually designed to make this part much easier. 
Grab a can and rub it over the top of another can from the pack. A circle the exact same size of the can will be cut out. This way, you can easily remove the new can from the pack without destroying the entire thing. Now to the art of lime squeezing. When you pick limes at the grocery store, you never know how juicy they are. And often, when you bring them home and squeeze them, almost no juice comes out. Try heating these citruses in a microwave for 30 seconds before cutting them open. You'll see that the juice will come out much easier. But be careful, they're going to be hot and you don't want to burn your hands. If you're hanging out with your friends and feel like listening to some music but don't have a loudspeaker, there's no need to worry. Place your phone in a cup or bowl. The sound will get louder instantly. If you don't have a hanger at hand but still need to hang your shirt, this trick is for you. Most dress shirts have a tiny loop on the back between the shoulders and you can use it to hang your shirt. How about the worst case scenario? Your phone is running out of battery and you're running late. Try this simple trick. Switch on airplane mode. Your phone will charge to 100% in no time. You can run the sticky part of a post-it note along your laptop's keyboard. This will help remove tiny bits of food and dust that get stuck in between the keys. Avoid putting really hot food into plastic containers. Hot plastic releases all kinds of toxic chemicals, and we don't want our food to absorb that nasty stuff, right? What can be better than a bubble bath in the evening? But the bubbles are not only pretty and smell nice, they also keep the water temperature hot for longer. This way, you can enjoy a long, hot bath without getting cold too quickly. You got home craving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but your peanut butter now has two layers, and the oil is at the top. To avoid getting disappointed, next time, store a peanut butter jar turned upside down. Your screwdriver and wrench can work together to remove that stubborn screw. Grab your screwdriver's handle with the wrench and use it to apply more force. This method will also help you reach more difficult areas. There is a reason why your coffee stirrer looks like a straw. It has holes in it because it reduces the amount of plastic manufacturers have to use. Plus, they prevent the stirrer from floating. The holes in the stirrer get filled with coffee, which in turn makes it heavier. And speaking of coffee, you should never buy the product that is more than 18 months old. Make sure to look at the best before date when buying it. If you've ever had trouble with those classic salt and pepper shakers, the ones you may see in diners, I've got a trick for you. Instead of shaking your entire arm to try and get some salt out of the container, try rubbing the bottom of one container with the bottom of the other. Grab the salt and hold it so that the bottom of the container faces downward. Now, while holding the pepper shaker upright, rub the two bottom parts together, creating circular friction between them. After this, the salt will spill effortlessly. After a long day of hiking, your shoes might smell funny. Well, I've got good news for you. Put dry tea bags inside your shoes and keep them in a dry place for a while. The tea bags will absorb bad smells and make your shoes dry. If you've torn your flip-flop while taking a walk, there's a way to save the day, but only if you have a bread clip with you. First, push the strap back into its hole. Then attach the bread clip to the bottom of the flip-flop strap. Here you go. Your body needs a daily amount of vitamin C to boost your immune system, but oranges are a tricky fruit to peel. To avoid getting sprayed all over your face, start by cutting off both the top and the bottom parts of the orange. Then cut the peel vertically. Hook your fingers under the opposite sides of the cut and open your orange. If it's difficult for you to figure out how much detergent you need to wash your clothes, here's a tip for you. Usually, detergent caps have markings that indicate the exact amount of liquid you should use per wash. It helps your detergent last longer. Permanent markers are not as permanent as you might believe they are. I can prove it. Let's say you used a permanent marker, thinking it was a regular one, to draw something on a whiteboard. Good news for you, you don't need to throw the board away yet. There's a way to save it. Get a regular marker and use it to draw over the lines left by the permanent one. Let it sit for a while so that both markers blend in together. The thing is, the ink of the regular marker contains a solvent that dissolves the pigment the permanent marker contains. 
Now take a paper towel and rub the whiteboard clean. The marker will come off easily. If you need to peel peaches, use the technique called blanching. First, heat up some water. Wait until it starts boiling. Soak the peaches in the water for about 20 seconds. Then put the fruit into a bowl with cold water and leave them for about five minutes. There you have it. The peel will come off nicely and easily. That plastic lid covering your drink can be used as a coaster. Take the lid off and put it on the table. The bottom of your cup will fit perfectly into the lid's inner ring. No more stained tables from now on. Bristles on escalators are there for safety reasons. They remain stationary while the escalator is moving, preventing people from standing too close to the sides. This helps to avoid accidents like getting your shoelaces stuck. If you pay close attention to elevator doors, you'll notice they have a small hole in them. This is a keyhole, and only authorized personnel have the key to it. They use it in emergency situations or during a regular maintenance routine. How many hidden features are there in your car that you have never heard of? Most cars these days have everything color-coded under their hoods. It makes it way easier to know what you need to supervise between services, like the dipstick, the oil cap, or the coolant. You can even have a look at the brake and washer fluid. Anything else that's black or gray, just leave it to the mechanics. Ever seen a snowflake light on the dashboard of your car? It's not there to let you know the winter holidays are coming if that's what you're thinking. It's actually a sensor that indicates the exterior ambient temperature. It gets activated and pops up the light whenever there's a road warning due to a sharp drop in temperature. It may sometimes even come on with an audio warning or a message on your dashboard to warn you that the roads may be getting icy, so you can either adapt the speed or change to the appropriate tires if necessary. Most cars come with added features for the summertime too, like those neat sun visors. Yours might have an added bonus you might want to check out. We all know they twist to help the driver out when the sun is not shining from the front, but some of them can also extend so they can provide shade to a larger area. If you figure out your sun visor doesn't extend, there's a simple solution though. Buy a sun visor extender. You can even find them online. They work by being attached to your existing sun visors or windows for better shade coverage and visibility. Let's find some hidden features at home. It's not rocket science, but there is a wrong way to make ice in the freezer, and that's because you're probably not using the ice cube tray correctly. They come with that particular shape because you need to fill the trays until there's a layer of water on the top. This layer will help remove the cubes faster from the tray because it will crack when twisted and leave each cube poking out. You can then grab them in no time and enjoy your drink. If you find that the heat on your oven is too high or you need to cook some delicate dishes that require more control over the temperature, there's an easy way to adjust that. The knobs on your oven should come with calibration screws on their backs. Pop out the plastic knob and adjust it to your preferences. Be sure to disconnect the oven from any energy source before doing it. Do you know what your stove and your car have in common? They both have hoods that you can open if you need to have a peek or if they need some cleaning. If you look closely at the top of your kitchen stove, you will see two hinges located on the back corners. You'll be able to easily lift it up and clean out all the grime that's been stuck in there. Ever wondered why glue doesn't stick to the inside of the bottle? The answer is a bit more complex, depending on the type of glue. But the simple response is, well, it doesn't have any air in there. PVA glue contains some molecules called polymers and water. When the glue is out, the water evaporates, leaving just the sticky polymers behind. Things are more or less the other way around with superglue. It has a chemical that solidifies as soon as it hits water vapors in the air. Did you know Microsoft Word has a feature that you can use for references and a bibliography? It's not only helpful for keeping track of everything, 
but it also automatically formats all the information accordingly. If you like to surround yourself with as many houseplants as possible, here's an easy way to figure out if they need watering. Stick your fingers into its soil. It should give you a better idea than simply looking at the plant's surface. If you can reach 2 to 3 inches into the soil and feel it's dry, the plant most likely needs some hydration. However, this trick does tend to work better with smaller potted plants because of the limited depth. In any case, it's always best to research the plant's needs in terms of watering and sunlight before committing to a plant. And always, be careful not to damage its roots. Be honest, you indeed have clothes you wear all the time and some that just sit there in the back of your closet that you've most likely forgotten about. Here's a neat way to figure out which one is which. For starters, you'll need to turn all of your hangers backwards. If you really feel like putting more effort into this project, you can wrap some pieces of electrical tape on the hangers and write the start date on each. After that, everything is pretty self-explanatory. Each time you wear a particular item, turn the hanger around, making it face forward. After six months or a year, all those items that have yet to be turned around should go to donations or yard sales. Another great way to use hangers to help you with your wardrobe organization is to use them for your scarves. They will be wrinkle-free, but you can also see them a lot better and have a clear view of the scarves you actually use and those you should let go of. If you're looking to increase the storage space in your wardrobe, especially when the season changes, go pick yourself up some vacuum pack storage bags. After that, you just need to fold your garments or other pieces of laundry, like bedding or blankets for example, and place them in the bags. Turn on your vacuum cleaner, place the nozzle on the bag seal and remove all the extra air from the bag. It helps with reducing the storage size of clothes and keeps the clothes clean, dry and moth free. Should you have an empty basket lying around and you aren't sure if you want to recycle it just yet, you can always repurpose it as a cool lamp. Wicker baskets work best for this. Just cut a small hole in the bottom of the basket and place a pendant light kit there. You can even paint it manually or spray paint if you need it to be in a particular color. Another way to neatly repurpose things around the house is to use leftover cookie jars to store dryer balls, but the sky's the limit here. You can also use dryer sheets to remove dust from screens around your house, like computers, laptops, or TVs. These items are electrically charged, so they generally attract a lot of dust particles. Dryer sheets are made to reduce static cling, so they won't only remove the dust but also help keep it at bay for a longer period of time. Dryer sheets also help out if you're having a bad hair day, believe it or not. They can seriously help out taming flyaways whenever your frizz just gets out of control. Run one of those dryer sheets from the roots of your hair all the way down to the tip and be amazed. If there's a particular type of soap bar you like the smell of and want to replicate that on your clothes too, pick up one of those bars to make a day's clothes fresher. Place it in a fabric and place it anywhere between your clothes. Your shirts should smell awesome every time you pick them up. You can also save on fabric softener. I don't know about your washing machine, but mine does love to jump, I'll tell you that. If yours tends to run out of its designated place, especially during those intense spinning cycles, it happens because it's not perfectly fixed to the floor. The good thing is that most modern washing machines can self-level since they come with a pair of legs. Just lift the back of the device off the surface area it sits on, and it will drop them, locking them into place once it's perfectly leveled. Have you ever wondered what these extra holes at the top of your running shoes are for? They're designed so that you can tie the shoes in multiple different ways. That's useful when you want to compensate for things such as a bad stride or even a damaged toe. Plus, you can change the look of your shoes the way you prefer. Many people use a dust jacket of their book as a bookmarker. No problem with that, it will save your book from bent page corners. But the primary purpose of a dust cover is to keep the book safe from distortions 
For instance, if you spill juice or drop some of the food on your book while reading it. The Tic Tac dispenser has this little groove on its top, so you can dispense only one Tic Tac at a time. Even though, let's be honest here, nobody does that. Most of us just spill a whole bunch at once and then we wiggle all those extra Tic Tacs back in. Those rubber bumps you see between the tire treads are there for your safety. The raised edges tell you what the minimum height of your tread is. If the bump and the edges are even, it's time for you to visit the tire shop as soon as possible. But if the bumps are well beneath the level of the edges, you're good to go. What about that black grating on the microwave window? It's something called a Faraday shield. And it's there to prevent microwaves from getting away and turning the entire room into a Faraday cage. If the microwaves escape, your meal won't cook properly either. So yep, the cage is not there to make it difficult for you to see your meal while it's cooking. It's keeping the electromagnetic energy inside. How about a wrench compatible screwdriver? Cover your screwdriver with the end of your wrench and you can increase its torque. That's why the head of your screwdriver is designed the way it is. When you have odd angles, you can use this strategy. You've probably heard those myths, the blue side of the eraser can erase the pen. False. Its purpose is to erase a pencil. But in case you're writing something on heavier paper. The blue side can remove smudges you see after using the pink eraser too. Have you ever wondered why oranges in supermarkets mostly come in the red mesh bag? It's a trick to make this food look more orange and encourage you to make a purchase. An extra tip, don't throw away the mesh bag. Tie it up so you can have a small pot scrubber to clean your sink, kitchen, appliances, and dishes. You can see golf balls don't have a perfectly round shape. Their surface is covered with many little dimples, something golf balls didn't always have. At one point, experienced golfers started noticing how through time, older balls with imperfections, such as nicks and bumps, could travel further. Such things create turbulence in the air around the golf ball, which eventually reduces drag. So, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples so they could go farther and faster. You might have noticed that sometimes there are ridges in toothpick tops. It's more hygienic because when you break that off, you can prop the toothpick up on it and it won't touch anything. Another safety feature you'll find, this time in your car, is a tab on your rear view mirror. With it, you can change the position of the mirror so you don't get blinded if there's a car behind you with its high beams on. So this little tab helps you control the glare of lights coming from behind. This feature showed up in the 1930s, but in the early 1970s, it became a part of standard equipment in most trucks and cars. Do you see that tiny hole on your iPhone right next to the rear-facing camera? It's a microphone, and it's there so your phone can record sound as you turn your camera around. Some cables have a thick cylinder towards the end of the cord. It's called a ferrite core or a choke. It's a magnetic iron oxide that stops high-frequency electromagnetic interference. For example, you know that annoying static noise you get if you bring your phone too close to a speaker? This interrupts your call, which is why cable cords with big cylinders are pretty useful, because they prevent these things. Do you know why nearly all luggage bags and backpacks have two zippers? It's way more convenient and easier to open in that way. But not just that. You can also lock these two zippers together to keep the stuff inside your bags safer. You know how toilets at public spots like malls have those big gaps at the bottom? It's primarily for better circulation of air. This type of door also makes it easier to clean the toilet or check if it's occupied if you're standing in line. Other than that, if you get stuck there and the lock gets broken, you still have a way to escape. You can just crawl out. Ever notice those plastic end caps on utility knives? And they also have scales on them, which indicates you may use them multiple times but with sharp edges. You can separate the blades through these plastic end caps. Then you can move the slider and bring the sharp blade to the front. If you've ever taken a moment to examine a regular grocery cart, 
especially their fold-out section, you probably notice those metal loops jutting out. They're designed to protect the items you carry in your cart. You can use them to hang bags with soft items. You don't want to accidentally squish with heavier products, like bread, or easily breakable things like eggs. Many coffee mugs come with curved notches on their bottom. When you're washing your mugs, put them against the rack at an angle in your dishwasher. This way, the water won't pool in there, so your favorite cup will be completely dry by the time you take it out of the dishwasher. If you're a McFlurry fan, you've probably noticed there's a square hole in the handle of the spoon. It's there so you can attach it to the special machine that mixes the ice cream and your favorite toppings together. The machine has a bar that slips into this square-shaped spoon and then thoroughly stirs it. And you get the spoon so they can minimize the mess during the process. Quite neat, wouldn't you say? A regular milk jug has a dent on one side. Some might see it as a random design decision, but a dent has several purposes. One of them is to get bigger if there's a gas buildup. This happens when your milk is spoiled so you don't even have to try to check this out. Also, the dent is there so the jug doesn't burst if you accidentally drop it. The dent allows the expansion space that deals with the sudden pressure that happens when you drop the jug. Dental floss. Sure, it's important for your dental health, and it's easy to assume what you do with it. But dental floss is great in the kitchen as well, because it's a very precise cake slicer, way better than a regular knife. Most kitchen shears have a serrated opening right there at the center where the blades and handles meet. It's something you can use to trim difficult herbs such as rosemary, thyme, or chives. Because of this opening, you don't need to pick the leaves off by hand, but de-stem them in one motion. The majority of gelatin containers or single-serving yogurts come with a tinfoil lid, and in most cases, you can use this covering as a disposable spoon. Just peel away the covering and after a couple of simple folds, you'll have a perfect little spoon for your midday snack. You just spent the entire morning running errands up and down the street, and you finally stopped to treat yourself to a cup of coffee. You enter the nearest coffee shop, place your order, and notice that actually, you really need to use the bathroom. It's a regular-looking public one with multiple stalls. As you pick yours, the one in the middle, you get inside and your mind starts to wander. Why on earth do bathroom doors have a half-inch gap between the door and the lock? And why on earth do they have a huge gap between the door and the floor? Can we have a drum roll for this moment, please? Well, my friend, there is not only one specific reason why public bathroom doors have so many gaps in them, but rather several. Public toilets are designed to make people spend as little time there as possible. You aren't supposed to feel comfortable or at home. So the design would have to reflect this notion. Here come the gaps. In some bathrooms, gaps are so big that users may even feel self-conscious about doing their business out of preoccupation that the rest of the people standing in line will see them. Then there's the matter of pricing. Making custom doors can be a heavy burden for the people building public toilets. This would mean understanding exact measurements so that doors would always fit the mold of the stalls it's supposed to be installed into. Now, not all the gaps in public bathrooms are necessarily the same size. They may vary, even if this variation is small and often unnoticeable. So these gaps actually help to reduce the margins of errors and to turn production more cost-effective for the people financing them. In case a door comes wider or more narrow than it should, the gap regulates the differences and allows for their installation anyway. There is also the case of air circulation. The last thing you want to do in a public bathroom is to trap odors. So you need a little space under and between the doors to allow the air to flow. Finally, the gaps are a big safety measure. It can always allow for people on the outside to see if someone inside a stall isn't feeling too okay and maybe needs some help. And what about that extra hole in the upper part of the sink? It has a name and everything. The overflow hole. And it's designed to keep the sink from flooding. So, in case someone forgets and keeps the faucet going for too long, or the sink gets clogged and water can't drain down from the main drain hole, the overflow hole comes in to save the day. 
let's say it buys you a little time before you have the entire bathroom floor flooded. Have you ever noticed how satisfying closing the door of a car can be? Car manufacturers devote a great deal of time to designing these sounds. Studies have shown that they create a perceived sense of quality in the buyer. It all begins with the primary material. While older cars used to be made with heavier materials, car doors nowadays are produced with lighter tin, which can make a rather unpleasant metallic sound once you shut them closed. So car companies employ sound engineers to ensure that there is the exact amount of foam, mats, and tin in a car's composition to make the most comforting sound possible. And what about those tiny dots on the top of your car's front window? The pattern of these little black dots minimizes distractions for your eyes. This black part, also known as frit, normally gets warmer than the clear parts, which prevents the windshield from deforming. And no, the tab under your rearview mirror is not made only for the purpose of hanging fluffy dice or aromatic-pleasing air fresheners. It's actually a switch that allows you to adjust the position of the mirror depending on the time of day. Flip it one way, and it's the daytime driving mode. Flip the other, and you're ready to drive safely during nighttime as it tones down the glare coming from headlights of the cars behind you. Next time you head out to the supermarket, make sure to keep this in mind. In case you don't have a coin to unlock these shopping carts, there is a well-kept secret that can help you out. If you have your house keys on you, check for a rounded key head. If you happen to find one, try using it to unlock the cart. It should fit perfectly in there, replacing the need to carry coins around. Because if we're being honest, who still has them? Elevators. If you want to ride them on your terms and your terms only, make sure to try something out. Most elevators have a secret button combination you can use to skip all the other selected floors and go directly to the one of your choosing. This might work out, especially on those days when you've pressed 13, but you wanted to press 33. On most elevators, this works once you simultaneously press the closed door button together with your floor number. This should help you get to your floor without stopping. Some elevators require you to double-press the selected floor numbers, as double-pressing will often cancel the previously made request, while other elevators require you to hold the open door button and then double-press the buttons of the floors you'd like to cancel. Now, to stay out of trouble, it's best not to cancel the floors of the other people in the elevator. They won't take it kindly. Also keep in mind that there are elevators that might not have this function. Now, for honey lovers out there, go ahead and raise your hand. If your pot of golden honey is crystallized, know that it is actually a good sign. Crystallized honey means that it hasn't been pasteurized, which means better product quality. With a decrease in temperature, the natural ingredient of honey, also known as glucose, will make it crystallize. Now, try making the best of it. To add some texture to your oatmeal or toast, add a layer of crystallized honey and enjoy nature's sugar. And if you don't like crystallized honey, plop it in the microwave for a minute or two. Ah, winter and fall. You know what this means, right? Sweater weather. But there's nothing more annoying than wearing your beautiful wool sweater and itching yourself all the way through it. Actually, I can be more annoying than that, but let's talk about itchy sweaters. To keep this from happening again, here's the secret. Turn your sweater inside out and soak it in cold water. Add 2 or 3 tablespoons of vinegar and let it sit for a while. Then, drain the water. Now, while the sweater is still wet, massage a generous amount of hair conditioner into the fibers of the wool. After letting it soak in the hair conditioner for about 30 minutes, gently press the excess water out of the wool and leave it to dry flat on a towel. There you go! No more itchy sweater! Any fast food restaurant you go to will hand out small paper cups for customers to fill with their ketchup, mustard, or barbecue sauce. But if you're eating some chicken nuggets or trying to dip your burger into the cup, there's always that bit of sauce that seems impossible to reach. Next time, try unfolding the cup. It'll turn into a small paper plate, and this way you'll get all the ketchup you poured in the first place. Padlocks used in outdoor environments should be clean and lubricated every three months. Regular lubrication will help prevent padlocks from freezing in cold weather conditions. Look for the tiny hole on the bottom of the lock. Then pour oil into it, and there you go! It opens again. One thing we often neglect is a point in an ointment cap. 
These pointy surfaces were designed to help us break the tinfoil protection of the ointment tube. You just turn the cap over and break the ointment seal with its own cap, and there you go. After a long day of work, all you really need to do is a bubble bath. You turn on the hot water and let it run for a few minutes. You might even light a candle and pour some essential oils into the water. Then, in comes the liquid soap. You stir the water until the entire surface of the tub water is crammed with bubbles and make your way in. The bubbles in a bubble bath have a fundamental primary function. Their job is to preserve the water's temperature, just so you can have warm water for longer. Do you have sweaty feet? Weird question, I know. But if you're one of these people, here's some good news. All is not lost. Try putting a dry tea bag inside your shoes and storing it in a dry place for a while. The tea bags will absorb the humidity and the smell off the soles of your shoes. So here I am thinking, shouldn't we have learned these things in school? Well, either way, if you learned something new today, make sure to tell us about it in the comments below. Here's how you can protect your bank card from potential fraudsters. Use a marker and cover the last four digits. You can also use a sticker that's easy to remove and place it over the security code. Have you had a house guest that didn't use a coaster? Get a hairdryer and hold it a couple of inches away from the stain. Blow it on medium heat for a couple of minutes to evaporate the watermark. If a faded ring remains, mix equal amounts of vinegar and olive oil in a bowl. Wipe it onto the marked area and rub it in until the stain disappears. Then wipe it off. Don't waste time scrubbing the burnt stains off the bottom of a pan. Instead, fill it with water and add 3 tablespoons of salt. Let it sit overnight as the salt dissolves the burnt marks. And in the morning, pour the water out of the pan. This way, it will be much easier to scrub all that grease off. Picture this. You're on vacation and your shirt has become all crinkled inside the luggage. You need it tonight, but the hotel doesn't have an iron. Don't panic. Hang the shirt up in the bathroom. And while you relax in a hot shower, the heat and moisture will unwrinkle your shirt. It won't be perfect, but it will get much better without any effort. The football is on and it turns out you've run out of standard batteries. You can use a smaller battery instead that easily fits inside. Now take some aluminum foil and crunch it up. Fit it into the gap on the negative or flat end of the battery. All done! You can turn on the TV now. Once your flip-flops crack and the plug easily slips out of the hole, it's normally a sign that you need a new pair. But there's a way to extend their mileage. Push the plug back through the hole, then take a bread clip and attach it to the end. The clip will provide enough support for the plug to remain in place. You've received a package and the receipt is taped on. You've managed to detach it from the box. But how to separate the tape without ripping the paper? Hold both ends of the tape apart, and by pulling it slowly, the tape stretches and separates itself from the paper without tearing it apart. Ziploc bags are perfect to keep things dry, but it would be great if they were larger. Take two and turn one of them inside out. They can now connect and work as one large bag, big enough to protect a keyboard. There's no need to carry your keys in your hand when you go for a jog. Instead, put them inside your pocket, take a rubber band, then tie it around the pocket from the inside. This stops the keys from falling out. You've broken your key in the door. It's stuck. Great! Arranging for a locksmith could cost up to $100, but for a cheaper and quicker option, try using a hot glue stick. Heat the end with a lighter, and once it's warm enough to melt, push the glue into the keyhole. The melted glue will enter the available space covering part of the key. Once it cools, it compresses and gains a strong hold of the key's end. Now, just pull it out. If you need to siphon liquid through a hose and want to avoid using your mouth, put one end in the liquid and hold the other upwards with your thumb closing the top. Now shake up and down. This jiggle motion pushes liquid upwards a little each time. And once it reaches the top, lower the exit point and let gravity do the rest. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock. Or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. 
While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power, leaving them only halfway in. Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak, fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass, starting up the barbecue, just as long as it's a sunny day. Missing a corkscrew or a cork breaking halfway? By using a stove lighter, heat the top of the bottle. The heat slightly expands the glass, and this forces the cork out the top. You've superglued your fingers again. Take some salt and pour it on top of your stuck fingers. Put your fingers into the water and slowly rub. The mixture will dissolve the glue and release you in no time. While hanging up a painting, it can be impossible to find that stubborn nail. Place a fork upside down and insert it so the nail is in between the middle fork teeth. The fork has provided a long arm that's separated from the wall, making it easier to slip the string of the painting over the nail. Once it's perfectly balanced, simply remove the fork. You need to put a cake into a container, but taking it out again later by lifting it up from the inside might ruin the cake. Put the lid upside down and place the cake on the lid. The base of the container is now the lid, making it much easier to access slice by slice. Pour out water more efficiently from large jugs and bottles by swirling. This will make the liquid inside spin, creating a vortex. The vortex allows for the air to flow back into the bottle as the water pours out, much faster than the glugging alternative. There's an easier and less messy way to remove eggshells from a boiled egg. Once fully boiled, crack the shell on both ends by tapping them. On one end, pinch off the shell. Use the opened end to blow with your mouth. The force of air will push the flesh and expand the eggshell, forcing out the egg undamaged. When the hinges of your laptop break, repairing them can cost up to $300. A far cheaper fix is to buy a picture frame and tape it to the back of the screen. You've dropped a small piece of jewelry on the floor, seemingly impossible to find. Take a stocking and place it over the end of the vacuum hose. Give the area a good vacuum and check the end periodically. You will eventually find it sitting at the end. You've drilled a hole in the wall, but the drill hole is now too wide. Remove the screw and find an object that is slightly shorter and thinner. Pieces of plastic, small wires, paper clips, or even toothpicks are perfect. Place whichever item you find inside the hole. It's filled the gap enough so the screw will now re-enter securely. Taking the trash out can put you in a gross scenario of getting bin juice on you. A great way to avoid this is by placing old papers at the bottom of the bag. Now, not only does it absorb all the liquids from the food and other sources, but also helps prevent bad smells from forming within a bin. Nobody likes mosquitoes, and pesticides are pricey. A cheap alternative is to take a plastic bottle and cut the top part off from the bottom of the funnel. After removing it, turn it upside down and put it inside the bottle. Mix two cups of warm water with two tablespoons of sugar. The mosquitoes will be attracted to the formula inside and become trapped. Now just sit back and relax without getting bitten.